All right, so here we are in week eight, guys. We are taking on the four and three Denver Broncos. Now, his record isn't the greatest. I think that's probably largely due to the same issue we have. He doesn't have a quarterback that has abilities. We are, in fact, taking on a pro player. It goes by the name of Yardsick, though. I'm expecting this to be a good one. Let's go ahead, deal with some things, and then jump into the game. All right, so we got some player upgrades, and Curtis Samuel is going up to an 85 overall, which means he is unlocking his second ability slot. Plus two deep route running, plus two release, medium route running, and spec catching as well. Some really nice upgrades. Antonio Gibson, of course, is getting abilities. He's actually one upgrade away from getting his second ability slot. Really excited for that one. Plus two carrying and break tackle here. RG3, we're always looking for the RG3 upgrades. We're going with the strong arm once again. It's not going to move his overall. We get awareness and throw accuracy mid again. Come on, man. I am begging for throw power, please. Our user St. Juice is getting an upgrade here as well. He's going up to a 70 overall. We'll do the hybrid on him, his highest archetype. Awareness, man coverage, play rec, and press. No physical attributes, which is a bit unfortunate. Cameron Cheese, man. I mean, this guy might be a legend of the Washington football team. He is going up to a 30. Three overall man so he's gonna get plus one awareness plus two run block plus one finesse and run blocking power man can we get some words of motivation for my guy cheese man in the comments below this guy like i said is an absolute team a legend ionitis iodonis don't know how to pronounce his name he doesn't play it honestly doesn't matter maybe i'll move him to like left guard or something i don't know there's just no role for him on this team unfortunately Let's go ahead and give Curtis Samuel his second ability. I think for the first ability, we have Route Technician, helps against man coverage. In the second slot, I'm looking at Deep Out Elite. I was hoping for a Route Apprentice right here, but he doesn't quite have the upgrades necessary. We'll go Deep Out Elite for now, and I think that's going to do the job pretty nicely for Curtis Samuel. What's up, Dobby? What's up, buddy? We also have Antonio Gibson to deal with right here. Again, he's one upgrade away. In the first slot, we have, we could do tank, we could do running back, apprentice, grab and go, some interesting choices, but we could do bulldozer if we wanted to. I think I'm going to go with tank. That way we don't get hit stick. We're guaranteed to break every single hit stick. I feel like this has got to be the one. And we actually have the second, okay, the second ability slot is unlocked. The only thing he has right now currently is grab and go as my dog is walking around in the back. We're going with grab and go though. What do I need for human joystick? 95 overall elusive back. How close are we to that? Not close at all. All right, 11 more upgrades with Antonio Gibson. Maybe by the end of the CFM, we'll get him human joystick, but uh, yeah, nowhere near it right now. We also have a couple staff points to spend right here. Not a ton. We're working on this tree right here. Staff modifications, trying to unlock after school tutoring. We're making our way there. We need about 30 more plus however these, yeah. Okay, we need a lot more actually. I forgot that after school tutoring, each tier is 20 staff points. So if I keep remembering to actually set my game day goals, which I just did, we should get it done in a couple weeks. Let's also take a quick look at the top performers in the league so far through a couple weeks. Tom Brady already has 4,300 passing yards. That is insane. What week are we in? We're in week eight and Tom Brady already has 4,300 yards. Stafford is right behind him. Is this real? How are these dudes throwing for this many yards already? That is actually crazy. Rushing leaders Ty Johnson is number one with nine touchdowns and 900 yards. Derrick Henry and Kamara are right behind him. Receiving leaders Tyree Kill, Deshaun Jackson, and Isaiah Coulter? Never heard of that guy in my life. Leonard Floyd is leading the league in sacks with 12, Tremaine Edwards, and then Calais Campbell. Interception leaders. Darius Williams, Jamin Davis is number two for us, Kadar Holman, tackle leaders Fred Warner, Ronald Darby, and AJ Moore Jr. So some interesting, interesting stats there. That's pretty cool though. I want to make sure to check this more often throughout the season. That's something that people request quite frequently. So that's something I want to do more for you guys. Just make the league a bit more immersive for you guys watching. He's always so needy. Every time I record, he always wants to just make an appearance. Clout chasing. Clout chasing pup. Here we go. We're in Mile High Stadium, currently sitting at 6-1. Let's make it 7-1 and beat a great player. All right, he's rocking the mustards, and I don't even – what defense is this? This is kind of scary. I'm running the ball in the first play. I got to see what this is. It looks like wide, but it doesn't. I don't know. Tank taking effect on the first play, breaking the hit stick. 
Oh, it's three through five normal. Interesting. I haven't really played this a lot this year. All right, so he's got edge threat on Vaughn Miller. So we gotta watch out for Big Vaughn. Not the greatest throw ever from RG3, but it got to where it needed to be. Cam Sims, nice little toe tap animation for a huge dot. I told you guys, we need to play more balance. I'm gonna start doing that this game right here. Antonio Gibson, ooh, we gotta make that cut and we were off to the races. Gibson again, Gibson making some plays. Gibson, tank. Really nice pocket presence from RG3. I'm surprised we didn't get sacked. Dodd, Curtis Samuel, the running back, table route, pulled the zone away. Curtis Samuel wide open on the curl. His signature selly, man. We're going up 7-0. What a beautiful opening drive. All right, nice dot to start. I thought Roberts was going to get there and be able to break it up. Melvin Gordon, though, with a nice catch up to the 16. Not ideal. We got to get Sinji, though. Okay, big tackles. There we go. Another run play, but we're making contact at the line of scrimmage. Is that McTire again? Pick. Okay. All right, it's fine. It was double covered. It was double covered. It should have been an interception. That's fine. All right. Way to hold a 3K mag after giving up a huge dot to start. Let's lock in. Let's get points on offense again. What's up, dude? You watching? You watching, little bro? Gibson, come on. We got to turn the corner. All right, way to get the ball off. Roberts, Ooh, he, he screamed right there. What a laser from RG3 down the sideline. Nice swerve animation from Cam Sims. Getting his feet in bounds. Up the seam. Cam Sims, he's into the end zone. I was a little scared because his user was right underneath it. But because we don't have Gunslinger, he lofts it a bit more and it worked in our benefit right there. 14 to 3. Come on. Pick Fuller, come on, man. Let's go. Perfect defense. Over top of the user, Curtis Samuel with this spin move. That was close once again, but RG3 putting it right on the money. Sims. Oh, Sims, that is a tough catch. Maybe if we had superstar abilities on him, he would have grabbed that. That's a tough, that's a tough catch though. I can't blame him for that one. All right, I don't think he's gonna expect a run on second and 10, so that's what we're gonna hit him with. Ah, it didn't really work the way I was hoping it would. Only a gain of one, third and nine. Gibson, come on, Gibson. Stress left, we got the numbers. We got the numbers, Gibson. Ah, he ran from it, dang. Oh, I thought we turned the corner again. All right, I think he's blitzing here, so I'm going to try to make a quick read. Oh, he's actually not blitzing, and he's going to give up the wheel to Antonio Gibson again. Why, did, why does everyone just continuously always give up the running back wheel? It's it, I always put it out there, but I never even really look to it because I don't expect people to actually just give it up every time, but they do. I'm really not going to complain, though. 21-3, to three, one more stop. This game is a flood.
Uh, we ran match coverage for the first time, and uh, he ran a play that destroys match coverage. I'm a little depressed that I gave up such an easy touchdown after getting off to a great lead, but um, I like to make mistakes, man. It's just what I do. I think I'm going to run the ball. Antonio Gibson, nice little pickup. We needed the conversion. We still have all three timeouts, so clock's not a huge factor. Wow. I ran cover three with 25 yard zone drops, and I don't know where any zone on my field was. They just all completely dumbed out. This game took a very sour turn pretty quickly over stuff I don't even really feel like I had that much control over, honestly. All right, we're fine though. He gets ball at a half. It's really important we drive down, get some type of points. We cannot turn the ball over again. Not to Cam Sims. Come on, Cam. RG3 with the scramble. Okay, we'll take that. Let me call a timeout right now. RG3 with the scramble again. 22 seconds left. Only one timeout. We have to get in the end zone. Touchdown wide open is Terry McLaurin. We're McLaurin. McLaurin. We're taking a 28 to 17 lead. Really nice pocket presence from RG3 stepping up and delivering the dot on the match coverage. 11 point lead. 18 seconds. We cannot let up any points before half. Pick. Wow. My guy saw the hot dog vendor in the stands and was really hungry or something because I have no idea what he was doing. Oh, don't touch him. I thought you had to touch the person for like the clock. What? I thought the play only ended if you touched the person. Maybe if they give up? I don't, I don't know how that works. Uh, that's really unfortunate though, man, that we're going to give up three before half. I really feel like he threw a pick six, which basically just ended the game right then and there. My player was right in the area and just, I don't know what he was doing. I really don't. All right, we're honestly fine though. We're still up eight. He does get ball here, but as long as we're able to get a turnover or at least hold him a three, I think we're in a great position to win the game. They tackle St. Juice. Pick. I feel like that was kind of a gift. I'll take it though. Guess who, man? McTire making plays once again. Ah, uh, we had the tight end wide open, and the three-man rush gets home. Fourth and 17. You guys know me too well, man. You guys know me way too well to know if I'm going for this or not. Oh, I think we had the tight end again over the deep zone. I accidentally pumped, faked it, though. Not a great offensive sequence for us. The pressure from the D-line was just getting there that time. I need some pressure of my own, man. Where are my guys at? There we go. That's what I'm talking about.
Defense, come on, man. Pressure burst pipes. Let's go. Number two for McTy- I'm, This guy's- this guy's a glitch. He's literally a glitch. He's too good. You gotta get him on your team if you're playing CFM. Backside dig wide open. One of the worst throws I've seen all year from RG3, but still completion. I won't complain too much. Gibson into the end zone. What what a toe tap. Honestly, there's nothing else to say about it. Great throw from RG3. Even better catch. Pending the extra point. We're going up 15 late in the third quarter. Acker kicks only, man. Come on. Great offense. Forrest, a name I haven't called a lot this year. The rookie linebacker coming up and making what I want to say is one of his first big plays all season long. But it definitely is a huge one. That might be the dagger for this game. Let's go, Forrest. I didn't even really react to it. I, I didn't think I caught it. Honestly, the way this, the way Madden 22 works, you just drop every pick. Anything that's even remotely contested just gets jumbled and lost. But we actually caught it. So I didn't, it didn't even really register until it was already in the end zone. Jonathan Allen, come on, man. Get some pressure. Is that Jonathan Allen again? Jonathan Allen having a big drive. Three sacks. All right, now the D-line is just going crazy for no reason. I, I don't know. Where was this earlier in the game? Okay, where is Montez Sweat? Why is Montez Sweat not on the field? Who is this? Two Hill? Bro, I have De'Aaron Payne and Iadonis, and Two Hill is the guy who comes in when Montez is tired? How does how does that work? We're just getting pressure now. Out of nowhere. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know where this came from. All right, boys, that is going to do it. A 22-point victory on the road in Denver over again. Like I said, a pro player. One of the better players in the entire league. So I'm super happy with that one. Let's jump out of here and see what upgrades we have. All right, we only get one upgrade, which is a little saddening, but it's Derek Forrest who made a huge play. The dagger in that game. He's up to a 69 overall, our favorite. Our favorite overall in the game, honestly. Plus one acceleration. Nothing else too crazy, but again, a huge victory there in week eight. We're moving on to seven and one, still atop the NFC East, of course. Let's take a quick look at the box score from that game, see our stats. RG3 had 135.4 passer rating, 340 yards, five touchdowns, and one interception. RG3 played great that game. He had the one super floated pass for a pick. It wasn't a pick six, but it was a pick. That was a bit fortunate. Drew Locke, four interceptions, still had almost 400 passing yards. Rushing-wise, Antonio Gibson with nine carries for 45 yards. And then on the receiving end, Jerry Judy went crazy. But so did Antonio Gibson. Eight receptions for 131 and two touchdowns. Cam Sims with four for 128. So I'm loving the way the team played that game. Cam Sims and Gibson both played amazingly. A huge reason why I won that game. That's going to do it for this week, though. Next week, we actually have a bye week, and then we're taking on the Buccaneers and then the Panthers. So two really difficult games coming up again. We have probably one of the hardest schedules in the entire league, I would imagine. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in week 10 against the Bucs, man. Peace.